Welcome to the Art Lady channel. Today's lesson is on Vincent van Gogh. And we're gonna be making this church that Vincent painted. And he painted this one month before he died in 1890. And it was actually painted in June of 1890. And he died in July of 1890. Um, and he was 37 years old. At the time, Vincent was suffering from mental illness and severe depression. He su suffered from depression most of his life. And so all for, for years, I always looked at this painting and thought that, wow, look at the lines in the roof. They're all crooked. Uh, and I thought it was because of the way he interpreted the church. I thought it was because, and here's some sagging in the roof here and here. And I thought it was because of his mental illness, because it was so close to the time that he died, that that's how we saw the church. But then just a few years later, I actually visited the church and um, I was surprised to see, and here's the church present day. I was surprised to see that it's the same as Vincent painted it. You know, the roof lines are very saggy here. Uh, they're not straight, they dip here. And at this time here, almost over a hundred years after Vincent painted it, the windows are now all broken and, and it's kind of dilapidated. So even during the time of when Vincent was alive, this church seemed to be very dark and kind of dismal looking the way he painted it. And of course he painted it with that dark, dark sky coming in, like almost like a storm is coming through. Uh, but it felt eerie to me when I looked at this church and then in his, in his painting. And then now, today, it still gives that eerie feeling. So this is, it's a good, uh, this October right now is a good time to be actually drawing and sketching this because you can actually turn this into almost like a scary church or a haunted church if you like, or you can just do the line drawing like I'm gonna show you today. So it's a fun little lesson to do in the months of October. So we're gonna begin. Um, I, I do wanna show you around the corner from this church is actually, um, if you go up the hill from this church, this church is kind of placed halfway on a hill, but if you turn around and go up the hill, you're gonna to come to a field in Uvo Soiree where uh, Van Gogh actually died. And here from the field, you can actually see a little bit of the church right here in this picture. Well, that's just the, the rooftops of the church. But this was here, up here, is where he did his last painting, in this field. And here's another picture of the field. And at the tip of, uh, right at the top of the hill, is to the right, as you walk up past the church, to the right, on the top of the hill, you'll come to a little graveyard. And that's where Vincent Van Gogh is buried, right up there, around the corner from the church. Um, and this is his grave. And then one year later, uh, or a little bit over one year, his brother Theo died. And his brother Theo was the was a um, a gallery owner, and he helped support Van Gogh most of his life. So we're going to go ahead and do a line drawing of this church, and you can turn this into um, any kind of. Uh, building you'd like. You can turn it into a haunted church if you want later on your own. But we're going to look at the lines of Van Gogh's church painting and then we're going to make our own church of Uvu Soiree. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start off in the center with some uh, uh, straight lines. Okay, we're going to begin now and we're going to be making this a very simplified version of Van Gogh's church. And in the very center of our page, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a straight line. And this is gonna make up the roof of this uh, kind of a circular type building here. And then I'm gonna put a dot in this, jump up, probably about two fingers, jump up. And then I'm gonna put a straight line and a straight line, and then I'm gonna divide it again right here. From there, I'm going horizontally down, horizontally down, and horizontally down again. And then I'm gonna connect, connect. 
I'm going to put in the first of the Gothic windows, so I'm going to give a guideline here about a finger, probably a finger down or a little bit less, and I'm going to match it up on this line here, a little bit less. This side's going to be in perspective a little bit, so it's going to be narrow. This window's going to be wider than the side window. And I don't get a lot of distortion in this. I just get distortion and the horizontal line here. I just get distortion within the width. So I'm going to make these gothic windows. I'm going to give my window sill, and I'm going to do a window sill here. And then I'm going to do a gothic curve, come down, curve right down to the bottom here. Same on this side, kind of curve it down and down. Now notice, I am giving it, I'm leaving out some of the detail here. I'm just making this simpler, simplifying this building. Then I'm going to find this, um, I'm going to swoop down from the top of this roof and I'm going over horizontal and then I'm giving a diagonal dot line down. This is going to form this other part of the building. I'm going to put in a rectangle here for the foundation of the building and I'm going to do the same here. It's going to be more square but I'm going to first from off of this rectangle I'm going to do a free form line that's horizontal and I'm going to swoop up a little bit here just to show the earth is a little bit um, uneven here and then I'm going to bring my foundation down to the ground. I'm going to bring my uh, vertically down straight for the side of my building and then I'm going to give it a roof connecting straight across and I'm going to form another gothic window this one comes down a little bit in perspective from here. So find this edge, come over and drop down just a little bit. And the bottom of the window is lower than the windowsill here. Just slightly, so I'm coming lower. And then I'm going to do my gothic curve, just kind of cur coming down, almost diagonal, and then connecting. And then I'm going to work up the second uh, roof level, just coming diagonally up, slightly from where we ended here, slightly down below, diagonally up, and I'm making a peak. Now I'm going to drop diagonally down, and I'm going to form the side, let's see, this will drop down straight, and this comes into another little kind of kind of rounded building here. This is really an interesting church. This rounded, beautiful architecture. This Gothic style architecture. So this is almost rounded here. We're going to form this little mini roof here. So I'm going to peek out here, which is diagonally down. And this one's going to be a longer diagonal. So I'm going to form this kind of a, um, an odd shape triangle. So this is kind of rounded, this roof. Straight line down. And I'm going to match it up with this foundation. Straight line over and then bring this to the ground. And there's two small rounded style windows. They're different. These are rounded. Let's see if you can see that better. Those are curved and these are more pointed. So I'm going to do two windows in here almost the same height as this, a little bit shorter. So one, give your spacing, equal spacing, two, come up, curve round, come down, come up, curve round, and down. Now the detail, you can put in more of this architectural detail later as you go along, where they have more brickwork, double windows, etc. Now this, this other roof here, right in here, we're going to make slightly. It comes from the top here. We're going to come over horizontal. Then we're going to come up almost to a, a, a vertical line, but it's slightly toward the corner, a slight diagonal. And then the roof line comes over, and then I'm going to bring this line up. 
This line's going to go right almost to the top of the page, leaving a little bit of space for a peak. This is the clock tower. And then I'm going to come over hor vertic um, horizontal, almost to this peak, drop down. We're forming the clock tower. Then the roof, find the center, put a line up, and then connect it. This is the peak here. A small arch here. Below that, the clock face. I'm going to put a dot in the center for that. And then just a few little clock hands with tiny dots to represent the numbers. And then from here, this has two narrow Gothic windows. One is partially blocked from here. So give the window sill line, the window sill line. Then I'm going to come up, curve around and back down, up, curve around and back down, trying to get the windows the same height. Now the side of the clock tower in perspective has a diagonal line down, and then I'm bringing this vertically down straight here as well. The roof, you don't see a lot of this in perspective. Look at that. Because it's so tall, so a lot of this is cut off. If you want to kind of, depending on your, your drawing, you can put a small, slight diagonal down here. Mine needs a little bit of it and a little bit over here to see a little bit of that side roof line. And these arched windows, the line can be diagonally down and really skinny, really skinny. Notice they go smaller and then smaller here. And then this side of the building, I'm gonna drop this down straight. And then this, it's very distorted perspective, so I'm just gonna kinda drop it down diagonal slightly and then drop it down straight for this entrance of the church. And here, this is basically the basic simplified version of this church. Then you can go back in and start in on some of the architectural details with your uh, pen or your marker or your pencil and then even putting in some of this fancier kind of trim, which is kind of like uh, squares. And as much detail as you'd like, you can arch the windows here, giving levels. These are pretty thick, wide windows. And this even has a lot of detail here where you can have uh, little skinny rectangles and brickwork, accentuating the arches some columns here. And the more decorative, uh, you know, you put in and you can match, you know, continue. All of the roof lines are similar. And you can continue adding your decorative elements. I'd straighten out this, put a straight line in here. Down here, this is thicker columns here. You can add some thicker columns on both sides. This has the I'm going to match this here, and all my windows would have the, the arch, double lines through it with window sills. And inside these windows, it's actually made up of three, and if you do it upside down, or capital letter A's, bring it down with narrow rectangles. And then this actually has a clover type shape stonework. Let me show you on Van Gogh's painting. You can see it clearer. It's almost like a clover shape in here. And you can, what I'm going to do is to simplify it, I'm just doing circle, 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 and one circle there. And so each of the windows, you can match it. Letter V's, I'm just going to do two on this side. I mean, I'm sorry, letter A's, and then I'll do a circle, circle. Actually, this should have been two circles there. I made a mistake. So I'm going to do two, one, two, one over here. And then I'll do the letter A, letter A, and then bring down your V's to make the window panes. And this is where the stained glass would be in here, the stained glass panels. And that's basically how you would do. Now, if you want a double line, you can put some lines in this area too, thick in this. Now, if you want to turn this into a scary church, a haunted church, a haunted house, 
You can make it as a, just a house. That's up to you how you finish your Van Gogh church.